Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Victoria Knits. I'm Victoria. It is a rainy day here in Northwest Montana. It's um, not too cold because it is raining. It's not snowing yet. And my youngest grandson and I, this is Nico, have decided to do some yarn dyeing. Now I have done some before on my podcast. You can check it out in episodes 14 and 15. And um, you may say, gosh, Victoria, what does Nico have on? <laughs> he has on his finished garden gnome hoodie and it actually fits. His sleeves are rolled up, but that's okay. Um, in this kind of weather, it's kind of nice to be able to roll them down and keep his little hands warm. It's only 50, it's 50 degrees out, so it's, you know, he's not freezing, he's doing okay. But, um, this is a size uh, 0 to 6, and I went down to a size 2 on the, um, the ham here, needles, and a size 5 on his um, body, and then I actually went down to a size 4 needle for his little hoodie, and he's enjoying it. So, as I said, I have done, I have showed a little bit of uh, yarn dyeing on this podcast before. Uh, here are um, a pair of socks that I have dyed before and knitted up with my hand dyed yarn. These were last year's Halloween socks. I hope he doesn't spit up on me, but he might. Might spit up on himself, I guess. And so this year, I have decided to join a make-along, and it is All Hallows' Eve Sock Along by J.L. Fleckenstein. I just happened to see this uh, posted on Instagram and thought, well, that sounds like fun. So I'll put the link um, below the podcast, and you can go there and uh, check everything out. But I decided, um, I decided it'd be fun to dye my own yarn for it. I was going to buy some, but you know, you can buy undyed yarn fairly inexpensively. One of the first things you need to do is you need to have a plan. So, as you can see, I have used crayons to come up with a little bit of a plan. Uh, I liked the red and orange, and I was a little iffy about it this one, and my daughter said no, she didn't like that one. So she, uh, I came up with this other plan um, with the yellow in the middle of the orange, and she liked that one better. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, and it's, it's really simple. Uh, I'm not doing anything super complicated. You can put, you can, you know, you can just come up with all kinds of stuff. Um, Mars at Hay Brown Berry, also talks about uh, making a little color image of your sweater or or whatnot, just to see what appeals to you. And it's it really is a great idea, and it has helped me quite often. And here comes some more rain. So the first thing you have to do is make sure you have a um, decent amount of space. Now this will not take take too much space because there's only basically three stripes on it and so half of the yarn is going to be all solid black and the other the other side the half that wraps around on the other side will be divided up into two different colors so um hey nico <laughs> so we're going to get going on uh winding this this up and i will uh explain all of that to you as we go and and I'm back, but without Nico this time. My son-in-law just got home and took Nico off my hands and uh, brought us pumpkin spice lattes. This one is for you, Eva, because I know how much you hate them, but I, I love pumpkin spice lattes. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself um, some bare bare yarn right undyed yarn and i want to say right out that i am not i'm probably not showing the easiest way of dyeing yarn i am going to use food coloring for mine 
Um, there are lots of ways to dye, dye yarn. There's lots of uh, tutorials out there on YouTube. Um, uh, Chemnitz does a great tutorial. Uh, Cappy at the Yarn and I has done tutorials. Allie on uh, Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. She's dyed yarn on her podcast and showed that with Kool-Aid. So, you know, there's lots of different things to, to do. I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert, and I'm also not going to pretend that there isn't an easier way than what I'm doing. This is just how I do it, and it works out for me. So, I usually, I think I've always bought my yarn from Cappy at the Yarn and I Etsy shop. This is probably, um, well, I'm going to say it's, it's not because this one has sparkle in it, so I bought one with sparkle, which I love. So, she sells a platinum sock undyed um, fingering and she sells it it's 75 uh, superwash merino 25 percent nylon and she has them on her website on her etsy shop site for 11.50 each that's pretty inexpensive so i usually buy mine in a package from her now the they arrive in a regular skein like you would normally get your yarn in it's not wound up in a cake so the first thing I like to do when I'm going to do self-striping is I like to get in, into a cake first because, you know, you really can't handle those skeins of yarn to wind them around how I'm going to need to do that. So thankfully, <laughs> Russell was a big help and he helped me uh, wind up some skeins of yarn. Oh, 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 I'm doing it. I didn't. There you go. You're doing it. Good job. Thank you. You're doing a good job, honey. Thank you, Russell. So, Russell was a big help. Thank you, Russell. <laughs> he was in a really good mood that day. Um, some of that video I actually shot while holding Nico on my lap, and he was not in the best of moods. So you could appreciate the challenge that that was, but it, it worked out okay. So according to my little plan, I want the black part to be 189 inches long. This is just from past experience. And then that means the orange part, I want it um, to be 63, the yellow 63, the orange 63, and then they'll be followed up by more black. You know, um, it's a pretty inexpensive process, so I don't, I don't sweat the small stuff too much. So what you have to do is, you have to make sure you have room to do this. And as I said, this isn't a big long one with multiple, multiple stripes that I've done before. So it didn't take a lot of space. My daughter suggested the back porch and this has worked fine, especially since it's raining out and I can't go out in the driveway. I have two chairs set up. I have measured out my space used a i've used a tape measure to measure the distance i need from chair to chair because i'm going to wrap the yarn around it and around those two chairs i've also measured the backs of the chairs and moved them in the proper amount so um so it takes into account that the yarn is going to be coming around the backs of the chairs too uh, if you're seeing that big blue blob somewhere over here that is um, a wood stove. My husband, Kim, he's been on the podcast before, is planning on building us a wood cord sauna um, next year. And so that's uh, the beginning wood stove for it. So it's parked down there, um, hoping, <laughs> hoping that inspires him to get going. He's uh, planning the whole thing himself and he's gonna build it. and. So he's been working on design. I think he's come up with something. So we're pretty excited to have that happen. Um, things you will need are um, some cotton, cotton yarn because it does not absorb the color and so you'll be able to tell it apart. You'll need uh, ways to identify section to section. And then I just like to dump the parts into the properly marked jars that I am gonna dye them in. And um, I, that seems like that turns out pretty, pretty well. Um, like I said, you know, it's a home sock dyeing thing and I don't, 
you know, I don't take it too terribly seriously. I'm not trying to sell this. I have never sold it. Um, I'd like to say I never will, but I'm pretty sure I never will. So the next thing you gotta do is take a big swig of your pumpkin spice latte and <laughs> get started winding all this yarn. So the winding up is all finished. I've made sure that I have marked everything well and I have tied it in uh, quite a few places so it doesn't get too tangled up. And now Russell and I are going to dye this yarn together. And if you don't learn anything, I hope you will at least be entertained. That is the iPad. That is the iPad. We've been soaking our yarn in water and vinegar, four parts water to one part vinegar. We've been doing that for about at least half an hour and actually it's gone on for an hour. Okay. Okay? Does that sound pretty good? Yeah. Now we're going to mix up some colors. We're going to get a little bit of warm water nice. so we can mix up our colors. Nice. And uh, Grammy wasn't very prepared because she doesn't have um, much orange. Ready. Okay. Okay. Paper towels are essential. Okay. So our orange one is right here. I bet we can get away with using just uh, two cups of water with that. Two cups of water. Yeah, two cups of water and a quarter cup of vinegar. Uh -huh. Let's see what we have. Yeah. We we'll use a piece of paper towel and check our color. Okay. That's a rather light orange, but. That's all the orange color we have. So that's what we have for orange. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know either. We're gonna have to go with it because Grammy didn't buy more orange color. So. stripe and a big black stripe and Grammy forgot to save orange color for this orange. So we have to choose another color. What do you think, Russell? Alright. Green. Green it is. Green it is. That's what happens when Grammy doesn't plan ahead well enough. Green it is. Okay, here we go. Do you like this? I like it. <laughs> We're making colors, aren't we? Yeah. yeah We're making colors. This is a neon green. We'll combine that and see if that looks good. All right, let's get this going, huh? Let's get this going. Let's get this going. Okay. Let's, go, let's get this going. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. Sometimes you got to... Sometimes you got to change your plan, huh? Yeah. Yeah, change my plan. 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 <laughs>
up to you. That would just felt your yarn. So we're going to cook them and then we're going to let them cool off all by themselves yeah. and then we'll rinse them off. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Russell. You were a good helper, huh? Yeah. So here's our finished yarn. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The yellow and the orange and the green turned out really bright. You can see that, um, well, there's Felix, one of our cats, <laughs> photobombing me. You can see how um, I should have had the black separated up into two separate jars because the black did not evenly distribute, but I still like the way it looks and I think it's going to turn out really interesting. This is for a Halloween sock pattern. I have not seen the pattern yet, <clears throat> so I'm not you know, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to knit up, but it is, you know, it's for Halloween. So I think it'll look, I think it'll look pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. And here it is all caked up. I think it's really, really pretty. Hi. Hi. So Russell and I dyed what some yarn. Didn't we? Yes, we did, didn't we? Do yes, you like it? I like it. We did a good job, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we liked our colors. We did uh, black. We did the black. And what other color? I don't know. You can look at it. What color's in there? What color is that? Green. Green. Ooh. Yeah. It is pretty. It is pretty. It's big. It's big. And we did yellow and orange. Very nice colors. And... Russell, you were a good helper. Uh, I'm a good helper. Yes, you are. And what do you have on? I don't know. I got my sweater on. You have your sweater on. That's exactly right. I finished today. I finished Russell's garden gnome hoodie. And it fits him just right. And he really likes it. And I will insert some pictures of it. And he, so he and his brother, Nico. No. Have matching sweaters. I made one for Nico too, didn't I? <laughs> so you you guys will have matching sweaters, huh? Matching sweaters. It's going to be very cool. And here you can see the difference between the first one I made for Nico, which was the multicolored blue in the back, and the one I made recently for Nico, which fit him much better because I went down a few sizes on my needles. Hi, Kim and I are on a little hike. Um, it's not too far from our house, just a few miles. I wanted to uh, 
film this with Bitterroot Lake in the background, but the sun isn't cooperating. I, uh, I'll insert a little picture of, of Bitterroot Lake. It's very pretty right now, and it's very pretty up here. The western larch trees are at their peak right now, and it's just lovely. It's really pretty up here. So, as you can see, I've been doing some yarn dyeing with Russell. Well, I also did some yarn dyeing by myself. And I was, um, I'm planning a Christmas flax light sweater for myself. So I wanted four yarns. And I was uh, looking at ideas. I was actually looking at Chemnitz tutorials. And I will link to the one I saw this idea in. I did not do it exactly as she did. She did a really, really pretty job. I'm not sure how hers knit up. But um, I knit this one. And I think it's really, really pretty. And I knit it. I knit it. I dyed it using these as she did in her video. What a clever idea, huh? So what I did was I took the, I took the, the bare yarn and I soaked I... it in some light green food coloring. And then I was gonna um, push it all the way down, but I like the look of the white in there. So I left it. And then I, uh, so I let it soak up a little bit of that green. And then I drained that off. And then I sprinkled it. Um, Russell helped me a little bit. I sprinkled it with these these candy sprinkles, and I folded it all up into um, saran wrap. And I put it in the microwave, which I hadn't done before. And I put it in there twice uh, for two minutes each time. It got really hot, and then I let it cool off. I like the results. I think it's really pretty. <laughs> what a clever idea, huh? There are so many things you can use to dye yarn with, it boggles the mind. It did need quite a bit of rinsing as as uh, she said in her podcast, because um, it is, you know, that you're basically putting sugar on this, so. But I like it. And as I said, my plan is to make a Christmas sweater. And so I needed four, four yarns, four dyed yarns. I wanted to do a couple of them myself because I had, I had the bare yarn at home. And I have bought two Christmas colors, which I'll show you later when I start the sweater. So my idea was, I, I dyed this. My idea was I wanted to do like a candy cane look. And so I went with a burgundy color. I think it's really, really, I think it turned out really pretty. I'm very happy with the color. I did this self striping. I divided it up into two separate skeins. This one's about 75 and this one's about 25 because I wanted the arm, the part that I knit on the arm, which will be this small part, I wanted it to stripes, um, you know, as closely as I could to the stripes on the body. So I wound them up differently is, is what I'm trying to say. And you know, that all went okay. Well, I haven't knit it up yet, so we don't know if it went okay, but we'll see. But when I was rinsing this burgundy color out, um, the white yarn here uh, must have hit that burgundy color and uh, you can see from this picture that I um, it's pink so the white is supposed to be white on this one and I tried to I tried to get it off I searched the internet and they said you can use uh, hydrogen peroxide on uh, wool to bleach it so I did that I tried that three times I tried it uh, really weak and then I tried it half and half and then I tried it full strength overnight, nothing happened. It stayed as pink as it was. So I was really disappointed and I thought, well, I, you know, I'm not even gonna use it now. I'm too embarrassed that um, I managed to get some pink on there um, from some of the runoff color when I was rinsing it and blah, blah, blah. You know what, who cares? So it's got a little extra pink on it. It's got some extra peppermint. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it with that sweater. I'm gonna see if it stripes up the way I wanted it to. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> so my grandsons and my daughter and son-in-law have been gone for a few days. They're out of state visiting. And so I've had a lot of time to knit. And I decided to knit these spooky Selbu mittens. I think they're very pretty. Let me get the cat hair off there. 
I like them a lot. Now this is the first time I have managed to knit from a chart without writing the chart out. I know that's that's crazy, but you know, that's that's how I usually do it. So here's the inside palm. It's got patterning there. It's got a spider here. I really like it. This is the left hand left hand mitten. I knit this one first and I was a little freaked out because I have knit um, mittens before, Halloween mittens actually, and um, they were they were a little tight and I didn't like that. So I started off in the size one and then I moved to a size two and then after a while I got scared and I went up to a size three needle and then I went and then I realized it was turning out okay and I went down to size two. Well, I, you know, it's okay because, I'm glad I did that on the left hand one because I have this big pokey out wedding ring. Um, I love my wedding ring. Kim cut it, he faceted it himself. We bought the stone rough and he faceted it, but it has a tendency to catch on, you know, those loops that are caused with this kind of stuff. So when I did the second mitten, which I wasn't planning on having it match at all, I knit this in uh, size one on the cuff and then size two the rest of the way up and it turned out much smaller with a much better fit. And Kim said, well, you're gonna redo the, the left hand one? Did you intend to make this one smaller? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't wear a ring on this hand, so this works. I love this, this uh, mitten, isn't that nice? I love the colors, I love the pattern. I, I uh, decided to do the spider on this one in white, so it looks like a ghost spider, right? I really like it. I broke up the color a little bit because I think all that purple and orange would have been too much. <clears throat> and I, I really like the way it turned out. I think it looks really nice. Also, I dyed um, some of the yarn for this. I dyed the uh, both the oranges, the light and dark orange, and the black. Now, I got the uh, purple from um, Cappy at the Yarn and I. I bought a bag full of uh, she had some assorted minis, and so one of her minis had this dark orange, and one of them had this light orange, and I thought, purple. This dark purple and this light purple, and I thought light orange and dark orange would look really nicely on those. Now, my dark orange probably didn't contrast enough with this light purple. This one contrasted much, much nicer, but I like them. They're for Halloween. They're a, you know, mix match. And I, um, and I did them without writing out the pattern. Look how far off they are. <laughs> Is that crazy or what? I could eventually do this one over, right? But then I feel like my wedding ring would get stuck. I don't know. It's, you know, it's a pokey out wedding ring. Uh, so yeah, I actually read right from the, the chart and with my ruler and it worked out really well. I think it's because, you know, only Kim was around to interrupt me for the few days it took to do these. Yeah, I whipped them out pretty quickly. And um, so it went really nice. I like them. I will wear them. I like the fact that they don't match. It's Halloween folks, right? It's for Halloween. They're supposed to be scary. In episode 18, I show what our winter drive to town looks like. Now we live about a 40 mile round trip from where we can uh, purchase groceries. So, you know, it's a long drive and um, thank goodness it's a pretty one. But in episode 18, I showed the, the winter drive. In episode 24, I showed the summer, what the summer drive looks like, because we make it quite a bit. And um, now I'm gonna show you what the drive looked like in fall, just a couple days ago. Um, I'm not gonna show as much as I did last time. I've just cut it out to the pretty bits and I've sped it up. So, you know, it won't take very long.
Well, I hope you like that. I love our drive to town. <laughs> and I probably forgot to say where you can find me. So I'm on Ravelry as Victoria Jean. And I'm on Instagram as Victoria Jean W. And I have a Ravelry group called Victoria Knits, if you're interested in joining that. So I was listening to a book on tape that was recommended by um, an Instagram friend. Hi, Joanne. She is um, JVMU1999 on Instagram, and she was recommending The Air Affair, as in Jane Eyre, The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. And hi, Seamus. Joanne has a wonderful grumpy dog named Seamus, who I love seeing pictures of. So I, I, was, uh, I listened to this book. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm so glad she recommended it. I'm glad I started off with the first episode. I listened to that one. They had it uh, at my library where I ran most of my books from on tape, but they didn't have um, the others. And so um, I decided I would order the next two books in paperback. So they are on their way. I'm really looking forward to reading them. I have started doing some reading in, in bed because, you know, when you're listening to books on tape, um, when there's people around, you need your headphones on so you can hear it and you're not interrupting, you know, what they're doing. But also when you have your headphones on, they have to interrupt you every time they want to say something to you. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of an annoyance. Um, it's kind of inconsiderate, actually, for both them and for you um, to kind of be ignoring the conversation and then having to pause and pay attention to what they said. And anyway, long story short, I've been reading books in bed more. I go to bed a little early and that's been working out really well. So I'm looking forward to having those two books. In the meantime, I, wa I subscribed to Acorn TV and I watched the Agatha Raisin series. I've read, I think, probably all the Agatha Raisin books. I loved them. I thought this, the uh, series was a lot of fun, but I wished it had more than one season. Now, they did change Agatha up quite a bit. She's not as old. She's not, I mean, in the books, they describe her as a little bit frumpy looking with brown hair and bear-like eyes, uh, but with good legs. But, and um, she doesn't sleep around like she does in a little bit, you know, a little more than she does in the book. She doesn't do that in the, in the series. She also has a, um, her housekeeper is her sidekick in the series. And I actually enjoyed all that. It was nice seeing a few changes happening. It was a really cute, really cute little um, show. And I wish they would have made more than um, one season. So after that, I started watching um, that Miss Marple series, and that's been a lot of fun. Who doesn't who doesn't love Miss Marple, right? She sits there and knits and solves mysteries. What doesn't get much better than that? <laughs> so I think Kim and I are gonna head on up the trail and see what's up there because this is as far as uh, either of us has been. So we have our bear spray with us and some water, and we'll go see what's up there. Uh, as I was knitting those spooky selbu mittens, I thought to myself when I got, you know, about halfway finished up here, I thought, oh, these would make really pretty hand warmers, and I was tempted to stop. But then I remembered uh, I have just recently purchased a pattern for some hand warmers, and so I started those, and hopefully on my next segment, I will be able to show you some progress on those.
Hi. <laughs> now we have a change of location. Today is October 21st, and I thought I would get this episode wrapped up by coming down to Little Bitter Lake so we can get a little up close and personal with the lake. It's very pretty this morning. I'll show you a little bit of it. I actually came down this morning so I could see the sunrise and I really, um, lucky for me, it was a perfect morning for it. Let's just appreciate this beautiful sunrise I got to see this morning. It was really cold out. It's about 24 degrees right now. Uh, it's warming up a little bit because as you can see, the sun has come out. And I had my pumpkin spice latte with me, which is long gone now. This is for you, Eva. There's lots more to come. <laughs> so you've probably noticed I finished something else. These are called the Chill in the Air hand warmers. They're by my friend Wendy Prager uh, Geckner. I love the way these turned out. I just used um, scraps of uh, sock yarn, mostly from uh, the, the Spooky Cell Boo mittens I finished, but I also used some other, some other yarn that I already had that looked a little Halloweenish. They don't match, and I don't mind that at all because I think they're more fun that way. They certainly do the job. The top folds down and keeps your hands warmer if you need be, which was a great idea. They are knit with two strands of fingering weight yarn, so they're quite thick and really warm. <laughs> and I really, really like them, and they've been very handy this morning, so I highly recommend them. And on this podcast, this episode, I thought I would give away um, the patterns for this. It was on sale, but it's not on sale anymore. It's not an expensive pattern. But I thought to three viewers, I will give away a pattern. And in order to enter, all you have to do is use the term warm mitts in your comment, either below the YouTube video or on Ravelry in my Ravelry group, Victoria Knits. You can also comment there. And I will pick three winners for this pattern uh, before my next episode. Uh, so it's a great pattern. I really like them. They are um, stock, stockinette on the palm, but on the back of the hand, they have a nice little pattern, which would probably look really, really nice in uh, just a single color, a tonal color or something. But I really like mine. I like them a lot, and I'll get a lot of use out of them. I was really happy last night. My daughter and her family came home back to Montana to be with us again from their little trip. It was really nice to see them again. I really missed uh, all of them, especially Russell, of course, and Nico. Just in nine days, Nico seems to have grown so much. But it was really nice to see them all again. I'm really happy they're home. While they were gone, I did get this um, sock head uh, cowl finished. I think it turned out really, really nice. I like it quite a bit. I sent the matching hat and that car, smallest car hat, to my niece for her birthday, Eva. Hi, Eva. <laughs> Again, hi, Eva. And she is going to be getting this in the mail also. I didn't quite get this finished because, you know, I did a little bit of selfish knitting while, um, while my daughter and her family were gone and it was fun and I don't regret it. But this is coming your way, Eva. I hope you I hope you enjoy it. I really do. I just want to thank everybody for watching. I just appreciate it so much. I've had a couple of new subscribers lately and I've lost a few and I think that's just the way it goes when you're um, 
podcasting, but I really appreciate everybody watching. And when I was talking about my pokey ring earlier and those spooky Selbu mittens, I was just wondering if anybody had any ideas for um, how to avoid that problem. With these, with these mitts, it doesn't it, they, it doesn't bother me. My ring doesn't seem to get stuck, of course, because there there aren't the loops in the back from the color work. But if you have any ideas, I can't take this ring off. This knuckle is way too big to get this ring off. That's not going to work. So I've tried turning it sideways when I take my um, glow up mittens on and off that have color work in them. But uh, if you have any bright ideas I haven't thought of, that'd be great. Also, if you have any book or TV recommendations, please leave those in the comments. That would be excellent too. I'd love to check out anything you're reading or watching right now. It'd be a lot of fun. And the last thing I have to show today is I have made a little bit of progress on my Sonia tea. I, um, I got the body done. So the body's finished and uh, now I'll be working on the sleeves. I did um, have to order an extra skein of uh, this yarn that is the knit crate yarn that I'm using. So I had to order a third skein of that because I used exactly two skeins of it on the body. And I plan on doing long sleeves on mine because it is winter time. Well, it's not winter time. <laughs> it feels like winter time though. It's cold as heck out here. <laughs> It's going to be winter time, and uh, I, I will uh, really appreciate long sleeves on this. So that's what I plan on doing, and I ordered an extra skein from Knit Crate. And if you do that, if you order more skeins, make sure you sign in under your Knit Crate account because you get quite a discount if you do. Not as much as they do when they send it to you the first time. You don't get that big of a discount, but it is a significant discount. I also wanted to mention the... Uh, Linda at the Joey Scarf podcast. Hi, Linda. I love Linda's podcast. She's such, she's a relaxed person. I know she probably feels like she's nervous on camera, but to me, she comes across as very relaxed and comfortable, and she calms me down when I listen to her. Also, uh, the segments with Ross on it uh, really crack me up, and I always look forward to those. Uh, Linda is uh, stepping outside her comfort zone and uh, working on some sweaters, which I think is really, really nice. But I highly recommend that podcast if you haven't watched it already. Joey's Scarf. Another one I've been watching is Nitty Dotty, the Nitty Dotty podcast. Um, she crochets quite a bit, but she also, I think she knit, um, but she... I believe she knit it, but she made herself a bra. She knit herself a bra. I would never think of that, but she said it was pretty comfy and I thought that was a clever idea. So you might check them out. That wraps up this podcast, the uh, off the porch segment. There's a few things on there. Hope you enjoy that. Oh, I wanted to mention the earrings I have on. Can you see those? They're little broomsticks. They're excellent. Um, a friend of a friend in Seattle area made these for me a couple of years ago. And this is an appropriate time of the year to wear them. And I thought they were really cute. I hope you can see those. <laughs> I really like them. <laughs> so as usual, goodbye from Montana. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Hey, think it can stop eating our duck food, huh? <laughs> yeah, I see you stomping your foot.
Hi, Russell. Can you say hi? <laughs> Do you want to say, I like my sweater? I like my sweater. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. <laughs> I'm done. Are you done? Yeah. You don't want to help Grammy anymore? Yeah.